Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and uh, this week I'm going to be doing a vlog of uh, for the Disability Readathon and uh, it's going to start out with a bang because I um, got emotional about my reading before I filmed the intro. So uh, let's dive right in. Ignore my unbr <laughs> unbrushed hair. I'm reading while brushing my hair. But I'm reading With You Forever uh, which has an autistic character and an autistic author um, and it's super adorable um, the autistic character is an artist and he's been having a hard time making art ever since his crush on a family friend uh, has grown and um, been affected by a semi-accidental uh, kiss that happened between them and our heroine is someone on a uh, uh, track to be a lawyer who has taken a break from school because of health issues, specifically uh, an IBD, which is a bowel disease, um, and it specifically says what one she has, but it's an uh, autoimmune disorder. Um, and I have IBS, which is Irritable Bowel Syndrome, which is a lot less severe and is less a specific thing and more a collection of symptoms that can happen, resulting from a lot of different causes. But yeah, it's really cool to read about that. This author puts a lot of disability in all of her books. Not all of it is own, own voices, um, but some of it is, like the autism. And a lot of autistic people have IBS, if not an IBD. But yeah, it seems like she does a lot of research to try to get that right. I've read one book in this series before because it um, that had a deaf character. And I enjoyed that quite a bit, but I'm enjoying this one quite a bit more. And the reason that I had to <laughs> pause hair brushing and talk to you is that um, there's a, both a dog and a cat on the cover. And, then, and uh, we've met the dog. And I was like, where's the cat? I need to see the cat. There better be an actual cat. Or false advertisement but we have now met the cat and I was just so excited I did a squeal um, <laughs> and it's a kitten and I'm so excited about it. Hey there it's the same day Sunday the 17th and I'm continuing to read the same book and I just got to the part where um, he told her that he was autistic and he also talked about how he told his family and that was just so sweet I started doing um, this which is like my happy emotional stim um, and yeah I really like that part um, it was very sweet he kind of opened up to her about that in re in response to her being open about her um, IBD and feeling vulnerable about it so he like um, was vulnerable in exchange and that was really sweet hey there so it's Monday um, I finished uh, with you forever and I loved it a lot my computer is fanning really loudly, loud, loudly right now um, because I just downloaded a new video game. It was on like 85% off, so I decided to try it. It was like four bucks, and it's called Darkest Dungeon, and it says it's like a turn-based RPG strategy type thing that's got like, and it like takes place underneath a haunted manor type thing. Um, so I'm going to play it while I listen to the audiobook of Ikenga, which I've been reading while I drive and such for the last week or so. Less than that, but it has gone kind of slowly. Forgot when I grabbed it from my library's audiobook catalog that this author's books set in Nigeria, the audiobook tends to be um, narrated by someone with a very thick Nigerian accent. Um, which is immersive and cool, and I like the way he does a lot of the voices, and, um, although some of the voices, when he does women's voices, sometimes he does them kind of normally, and then sometimes he makes them really squeaky and weird. Um, but mostly I really like it. I just have to listen to it at, to a, at a slower speed, so it does take me a little bit longer to get through it. Nnedi Akor 4 is pretty great. <laughs> um, I have a cut of woman checked out from the library but I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to it or not because I'm in a really weird mood reading wise. Um, I've been rereading a fair amount the last couple of weeks. I've reread an old series that's been very comforting and I've needed that so yeah that's making me feel better and more happier. 
a kenga is about a boy whose father was a police chief in Nigeria and uh, was assassinated. And this takes place mostly a year later when um, the boy is visited by his father's ghost and gifted an ikenga, which um, has spiritual significance and um, magical signif significance and the kid embarks on a quest to find justice for his father and also save the city he lives in from descending into um, a den of iniquity of criminal activity where people who aren't criminals can't afford to buy food and yeah I'm liking it quite a bit okay so it's Tuesday and um, I have started reading another book from Chloe Lise's series because I really liked With You Forever. It was really sweet. And so I looked in s to check if this author had any more autistic rep because usually <sighs> autistic authors will bring up autistic uh, characters multiple times in a five book series. That's how many there are so far. Um, so I found out that the second book in the series also has uh, an autistic character. And she also has a uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the autoimmune kind. So she um, uses a cane. Yeah, basically has a lot of chronic pain stuff. So I identify with a lot of that. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying her character. And her love interest is a redhead. And I like redheads too. <laughs> And he is a hockey player, but he's not like a hostile hockey player who likes to fight other hockey players. He's a really sweet, gentle giant type. So I'm enjoying that a lot. Also, she has a dog who is a uh, husky crossed with a Malamute um, called a Al Alusky or something. And so I've met a Malamute and <laughs> it looks like a giant. It looks like a a, a, a teddy bear head on a gigantic fluffy dog so I'm envisioning much cuteness and uh, yeah so far it's really sweet they have a complication um, in that they shouldn't date because they work together she he is a player and she works as his team's social media person uh, she handles the team social media and also arranges um, like events for them like charity events and stuff um to promote the team while also helping people and um she also kind of um looks over the shoulder their shoulders while they manage their own personal um social media accounts um so yeah and he's been crushing on her since they met and she's kind of realizing now that she's crushing on him as she gets to know him better and um they both and she has fairly low self-esteem so she has a hard time believing he might like her and you know identify with that as well so I'm um, having quite a bit of fun and I'm really looking forward to continuing it I'm about 25% <sighs> I also finished Kanga um, and overall I liked it quite a bit I liked the various characters um, the main characters friends were really cool the the last like 15% was a bit of a wild ride. Um, there were like lots of twists and turns and like changing of focus. Another very interesting middle grade fantasy um, to add to my repertoire. Um, a bit sadder and darker than a lot of middle grade, but um, still having a lot of those key features. And I think um, for kids who are more like 10 to 12 as opposed to 8 to 10 would enjoy it and um, be able to deal with uh, grief and um, anger um, that the main character has um, and learns how to deal with. So yeah, now I'm starting my next audiobook is Amari and the Knight Brothers, which I've been wanting to read for a long time, so I finally got the audiobook. So it's set in current day and there's like this secret magical stuff that her brother has gotten involved in and um, her brother's gone missing so now she's going to try to find him hopefully with the help of this um, these magical people hello it's later on Tuesday I'm laying down because I've been planting 
replanting roses we saved from my grandparents' house wore out my lower back, so I'm laying on a heating pad. Um, but I reached the part of the pictured book <laughs> um, that has a remarkably unmemorable name, where um, our autistic main character spend some time with her love interest autistic sister um she's very excited about having this other autistic person because she doesn't know any other autistic people in person i don't think um and like was really excited to spend time with her so they're hanging out for the first time now and um the sister is uh less far along on having discovered she's autistic and like knows less about coping mechanisms and um stuff like that so she, they are talking about those things and um, our main character is helping Ziggy work through her emotions about it and about um, how difficult things are and saying that things want to figure things out and how you need things to be for you and learn about accommodations you can make for yourself and that other people can make for you things get a lot better and it was very emotional and it reminded me of when I watched on TikTok when I was first um, finding other autistic people on there, there was a trend going around of people using the sound, Mama said that it was okay, Mama said that it was quite alright, um, and showing <laughs> clips of um, fellow autistic creators saying um, that person's name made it okay, said it was, said that it was okay, and had like in text how that person um, made them feel like it was okay to be autistic, like it's okay to stim in public, and various other things. And those made me really emotional. It's really precious when I meet other autistic people in person. I've only met one <laughs> other autistic person in person who knew that they were autistic. I have a number of family members who are undiagnosed. Um, even if you have different specific experiences, we still have so much in common and it's really precious, so yeah really good emotional part of the book. Hi there, sorry to do another update from the pillow. This video is gonna get increasingly long as I talk about non-book subjects, but I do actually have a way to relate the story to a book that I recently DNF that I would actually like to talk to you about. So, I'm about to talk about bugs and diseases that they carry. So I'm gonna put a time code you can skip to to avoid that. Um, I found a tick on the wall today. Sorry, that's B. Dylan Hollis. He's a great TikToker who does funny cooking videos. Um, which, on the wall is the best possible place to find a tick. But, um, found it, brought it to my dad to, uh, confirm, uh, what it was, uh, which he confirmed by the fact that he had to squish it with a knife against a counter to kill it. Proceeded to look up what kind it was. It's probably a, looks like it's a American dog tick, which is one of the less bad kinds. It probably only has something, a disease that can be cured by some quick antibiotics. But I have a bit of paranoia about ticks right now. I find them gross in general and horrifying and did quite a few, um, get it off me dances after um, the thing was dead and thrown away because of the, I find them horrible because of how they look if you've seen a tick they're a little bit more horrifying than your average bug but recently I've been watching a feminist who has a, a shop there sh that she makes products like um, mediocre man trophies um, and I started watching her videos because of that, but I have now, in the recent months, been following her husband's progress of going into liver failure because of a tick-borne illness that they've had a horrible time finding treatment for um, and having doctors believe that it exists. So I might be a bit extra paranoid about ticks right now um, because it was something other than Lyme disease. There are a number of other tick-borne illnesses. So I freaked out. <sighs> and fortunately, because I um, I have a cat drawer of cat medicine, and it was also almost certainly brought in by the cats. They are the main bringers in of bugs, um, and it was about at cat height on the wall. Um, so I dosed three of my cats with anti-tick, flea, etc. stuff on their necks. 
Um, I ha now have a very good system of I grab them, put them between my legs and sit on them um, to apply it to the back of their necks. Um, but I only had three doses and we have four cats, so I put it on the three who spend the most time on my bed and then wash all of my bedding. Um, because I read online that the high heat from the dryer kills is the way to kill such creatures. So tomorrow I'm going to buy some more anti-bug stuff to put on my last cat. Um, and then hope that I can forget about this incident and refrain from googling anything more about them because reading the article to identify the tick also gave me the heebie-jeebies. But the way this relates to a book is that I was reading um, White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson, which um, I've heard a lot about her and wanted to read a book by her, but um, and I so I tried it out and it has a really cool looking cover. But I didn't really know what genre it was, like I knew there was magic in it, but it's specifically like a thriller horror type thing, which I don't usually like, but I was going to try this one because it's a haunted house thing and I really, um, haunted house is one of them, uh, the horror tropes or genres, subgenres that I like the best. So I was going to try it, but, um, then, uh, a major factor of it is the main character has an OCD like reaction to bed bugs. And I don't mean that if that in a, the traditional way of exaggerating that she's just very fastidious. I mean the actual symptoms of OCD where you have an obsession um, which can be over anything, in this case it's bed bugs, um, that makes you anxious unless you perform the compulsion, um, which in this case is to check for bed bugs, make sure that um, nothing's on her clothing, um, not wanting to be around wood in her house, that kind of thing. And it's kind of cool to see that represented, but also mental um, illness and neurodivergence both ha show up in horror a lot, and sometimes it's done really well and sometimes it's not. This felt like it was going to be done well, but since I get the heebie-jeebies from bugs specifically, her having the heebie-jeebies about bugs was probably going to give me those whenever I listened to the book. Um, so I decided to put that one to the side. Um, and also another DNF that I recently did was I tried to read uh, The Last Quintista, which I believe means storyteller, because um, I've heard a lot of good things. And I really like the value of stories, and it's all about kind of the value of stories and keeping people's history and how um, it's a sci-fi about, like, the nature of storytelling and, like how that impacts the society and stuff. Um, but as I started listening to it, I realized how much the theme of eugenics was gonna come up, which is a theme in a lot of sci-fi. Like there've been a number of uh, Star Trek episodes about it and Stargate, but I haven't watched any of those episodes since finding out I was autistic or since coming far enough on my journey to know by that and like I've always been creeped out by it because I knew that I was weird and that um, I probably wouldn't be wanted also I always knew I had health issues um, but like eugenics has gotten to be more and more of a sore subject for me so I decided I wasn't in a mentally good enough place to handle that right now so I decided to put that one aside and that one I might pick up later on when I'm feeling better. Um, but yeah, I finished The Autistic Romance. It was really good. Really, really cute. I love it. Um, looking forward to continuing that series since I've now read three. And something I also really like about this series is that um, the tropes like um, grumpy sunshine pairings and like um, age gap and also the representation are all listed at the bottom in a little section as like um of the synopsis and like the listing on amazon and like book booksellers so like i really appreciate that i think more books should do that uh, that should be the norm because that definitely helps me decide i want to read a book way more than a traditional synopsis slash teaser thing that is written up this is frodo and this is one of the laundry balls that we put in the laundry so that the laundry doesn't stick together or so that it's less staticky or something. Anyway, he really likes them. He likes soft toys that he can like 
nom on. And yeah, sometimes he steals these. But right now he's in the middle of my floor. Yeah. You're pretty cute. Ignore the sock back there. It's clean. Yeah, you got such cute little TVs. You vampire cat. You vampire. Yeah. So I love it when Arwen decides to cuddle with me, but today she crawled into bed before I had actually gotten the blankets on top of me, and they were just next to me. So now she's holding the blankets hostage, and I would like to settle in to go to sleep, but I cannot because she has possession of the blanket. I recently learned that online this is referred to as biscuit making, whereas my family just called it kneading, which, you know, same type of thing, but it's a very cute name, making the biscuits. Even though as far as I know, biscuits, you don't actually knead them, you just mix them. I don't know why it isn't called bread making, but whatever. She really likes this blanket. She's also nomming on it. Yeah. It's a nummy blanket. Yeah. Nom 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 nom. Nom nom nom. Hello, it's Friday morning. I have a quick update. I have finally started reading Anything But Typical by Nora Raleigh Baskin. And um, I'm still not sure if this person's own voices, but it kind of seems like it because she consulted with autism acceptance groups as opposed to bad autism groups. Uh, when she was um, writing this book, she put that in the foreword or the acknowledgements or something. But like, so far, um, it's good representation, but it's making me really sad because it's uh, it's middle grade and it's about like this 12 year old and his mom really doesn't accept who he is. And she says he has nonverbal, no, verbal learning disorder. A learning disorder, which is the same thing that a friend of mine online has who I'll link below. Um, which is very similar to autism, but doesn't have, um, but the reason this mom uses it isn't because the doctors have said that, um, the doctors have said that this kid has, is autistic, um, but she says the other thing because of autism stigma, and she doesn't want to think about that stigma being around her kid, and she's just very ableist, and so it's really depressing, <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, it's only 200 pages, and the font is fairly big, so I think I'll get through it fairly quickly, but um, it's particularly urgent. I want to read more books that I own that I have um, bought because there is a library sale starting tomorrow. And I would like to have read some of my books from my previous library sales before buying more because, you know, I can't resist a library sale. <laughs> um, so I have a report on both Amari and the Knight Brothers and um, anything but typical. So, um, for a while with Amari and the Knight Brothers, I wasn't really getting into it. Like, everything about it is stuff that I like, but I just wasn't really vibing with it. But then as it went on, I did get more involved and, like, got quite into it. Uh, it turned out really good. So Amari goes to a summer camp that is for the training, but mostly testing, of kids who want to have supernatural jobs um and most of them are legacy kids so their parents and grandparents etc have gone have been involved as employees of this magical company but a few are in on merit which amari's brother was and he sponsored her to go in um but he is missing as i said earlier so she is mostly going to find out about him, but also now to learn more about this magical world because um, it turns out that she has some powers. And she has a different type of powers from everybody else. She has um, magician powers, which are like illegal. So um, it has a little bit similar to the conjurers from the book The Marvelers. Um, and everybody being mean to her for being that type of having that type of magic is kind of similar to that but it has very different vibes uh, a lot because there aren't very many classes um, it's mostly self-study and then you get tested so obviously the people who have grown up knowing about the magical world because of their parents um, have a huge advantage so Amari is dealing with that she has a super cute roommate who is a dragon shifter 
but who can't shift a dragon yet for unknown reasons. Um, and she's a really sweet girl, and then she runs headfirst into the same classism that she came up against in her um, private school that she got a scholarship to because of her great grades back in the mundane world. There was m a lot more about just the magical world you live in and the kind of politics that are going on in it and the magical organization that like takes care of everything that's kind of like a government but also a, a company, weirdly, and how that works, whereas um, a lot of magic school um, stories will have more to do with actual magic spells that they're learning. There were only a few magic spells that we actually learned during this book, or that Amari learned. But yeah, it w is longer than a lot of middle grades, but it was worth it. I don't think any of it could really have been cut easily and maintained the story. So I also finished Anything But Typical, and I thought it was really good. Um, it wasn't the most enjoyable read because when you read about a character who has anxiety and or low self-esteem and the character is stressed out or sad for a lot of the book and thus I am stressed out or sad most of the time that I'm reading the book. It is particularly about a point in this boy's life. Jason, he was diagnosed autistic at eight years old. He's now 12. Um, where he's using a website called Storyboard, which reminds me a lot of a website that I used to use when I was a tween or maybe a teen. Um, where you post stories for other writers to um, critique, but it's also a fan fiction website. So it's like both a writer's and reader's get together type of a thing. He starts messaging back with a particular person who enjoys his stories, and it's a lot about the development of that and the emotions around it. And um, Meanwhile, what's going on in his school life and his family life. As I said earlier, the mom is super ableist in this, um, which is hard to read about, but I did like the way that, that, that the book itself handled that. And this gets my seal of approval for representation. Maybe don't read it in, <laughs> if you're not in a very good place. I think that's gonna be the end of my vlog since I need time to edit this. Um, if you'd like to leave uh, an emoji I was looking for an infinity symbol the other day, um, and I couldn't find one, so how about a rainbow for the, um, a rainbow infinity symbol is often used to represent, um, the autistic spectrum. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!